Well, it's uh, Saturday lunchtime. I'm just um, just driving over to Betus to Kumni uh, Kakengri to pick up some Welsh kicks and some Barabrith for prize cash. And then I will be heading um, to our Das Resilience location. Well, I've just picked up the Welsh cakes and Barabrith from uh, the good ladies of Kakengri. Um, I can't believe it, but I actually managed to find a free car parking space just around the corner from there, so that was quick in and out. Not bad for better, sort of bank holiday weekend. Um, so I'm now heading up to uh, the Das Resilience location, um, which is somewhere uh, in Clacainog Forest. Um, it is half past one, so uh, it'll be a few more hours before that location is broadcast on our Facebook page. Um, but I'm confident that we will have a winner today and uh, see you soon. Well, we're here um, while he's just having a run around, just to go out the car now. Um, we're going to head up that fire road there. Here's my pack. Um, uh, more for my records than to impress you, really. But I'm pretty sure I've never had this rucksack as full or as heavy as it is today. One of the downsides, I guess, of uh, of being uh, on my own on this trip. Um, so yeah, the uh, there's an element of blue in the uh, sky. A lot of cloud breezing in and out. That doesn't look too. I don't know. It's not going to come out very well on here, but the dark clouds coming from the south don't look too impressive. Um, so we could get wet in a bit. But uh, we don't care, do we? Out in the open. Um, see you in a few hours, hopefully. Okay, so um, we've we've got to the point of the fire road now where we need to head off into the the forest. Um, it only takes about 40, 45 minutes walk from the car. Um, so to this point, relatively straightforward, um, providing you've found the right location on the map. Um, the next sort of 50 to 18 meters is going to be through dense forest, um, no, no path. So you've got um, mossy, boggy ground, um, a lot of roots to negotiate, fallen trees, branches, that kind of thing. Uh, I am about to apply some smidge. Uh, it's some insect repellent that we've started stocking recently. Um, it lasts about eight hours one application. So. Um, by the time I uh, come to need to reapply, I will either be at home in bed because someone's come and got the prize, or uh, we will be inside the mozzie tent and uh, protected. Um, Molly has just bathed in a very murky looking pool of water, um, so it should be interesting as we, as we curl up a little later on. I've got the poncho, well not the poncho, the basher set up, um, just to keep the rain off. We, we have uh, had a couple of downpours, but nothing too major. Um, I have been unsuccessful in lighting a fire. Um, those of you that 
saw the video of uh, the bushcraft day that we did, the Team DAS event, um, will be fully aware of my poor fire lighting skills. Um, but I had hoped to overcome them today, but I think in my defence, the, uh, the, tool, the wood that I'm working with is uh, too damp. Um, so we won't, Molly and I won't be having a fire. I was kind of keen on getting one going really, because she's obviously jumped in every pool and pond and river that we've come across, so she's bloody freezing now. Um, so she's shivering. So it would have been nice to get her a bit warmer. But um, it's her own stupid fault. It's coming up to about four, half four. So you should, in about, well, half an hour, hour now, I can't remember what time it is, um, you should have the location, and uh, I reckon 7 o'clock is the earliest we'll probably see anybody, um, but we'll see. Um, it's 5 o'clock, come and get me. I have um, I've hung the cash up here in the dry bag. Um, I've done this last minute really um, because it was in my rucksack and I was using it to lean on it. It was quite comfortable, so. Um, but I thought, oh, I better put it out just in case one of you is only down the road. Um, the only thing that isn't in this is the the one man mozzie tent uh, and the reason being is I'm going to do a short uh, video review of it um, and have it erected I might even uh, get in it Molly's being a bit on edge acting guard dog so she might feel a bit safer if she's uh, in a bit of a zipped up tent okay so here we got it the um the cot mounted mosquito net. Um, they're brand new in their own bag, zipped up, little carry handles. Uh, because I uh, am out on a dash resilience uh, challenge, my rucksack was full of prizes. I just simply strapped this to the, uh, the side of my bag, side of my rucksack. Uh, much like I've got, you can see there, I've got my Thermarest uh, in the same position. As I had this. Um, now on the side, we've got two sets of instructions. Uh, one for when you're deploying it onto softer hard ground, and then another set for when you're putting it on the cot bed. Um, but to be honest, it's very self-explanatory, really. Once you've got the bits and pieces out, and um, you'll see, I'm actually putting this uh, up on top of the tarp that's in the IPK. Um, two reasons. One is that this is a prize um, for the the DAS Resilience Challenge that we're holding in Clacanog Forest. And uh, secondly, the ground, I'm not sure whether I can demonstrate this, is very wet. Um, so I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night in a pool of water. So I'm trying to do as much as I can, really, to, to keep myself dry. Okay, so I've taken the actual mosquito net out. And you can see in the bag here, there's a little Velcro tab. And inside there, it says, is a set of pegs, a uh, set of poles, sorry, and some pegs. Um, so packed up, I've said this before, really, it's about two foot long maybe four or five inches diameter so there we've got pegs poles tent
case of the poles. Like most tents, they just slip in two little eyelets at the end there. And then along the outer of the mozzie net, these just hook, he says, over. And then as you do that, and move along the pole, the mozzie net begins to take shape. So there we have it. One man mosquito net, or as it will be in this case if we stay over tonight, a one man and his dog. Um, what I realised when I was putting this up um, is that if you've if you've got a situation where I have here, where I've got like a few lines in the basher keeping us uh, dry, you could do without the poles um, and just tie the top of this uh, to your ridge line. You can see that there. Um, so what that will give you is it. Molly's trying to have a look at it now. Um, you save a bit of weight on your poles, but more importantly, you could pack it down much better than the, the two foot long sausage. Um, so a bit more practical when you come to packing your bag, which uh, I hadn't thought of before actually putting it up out here. So there we go. Beautiful. Well, we can hear voices. Molly, good girl. Molly could hear them first. She might be giving the game away. Um, they're coming from that direction somewhere. So uh, we'll wait and see if they're one of our. <laughs> so well done, guys. Do you want to uh, introduce yourselves? Not really. <laughs> Chris Thompson, Danny Sanford, Dan Varley. Yeah. There you the go. Red Dragon Mercs. The Red Dragon Mercs. <laughs> And they are the uh, the first ever winners of the Das Williams Challenge. So um, thank you very much, guys, for making the effort. I'm not bad. Yeah. Hour twenty minutes. Hour twenty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> and record holders of the Das yeah. Williams Challenge. <laughs> oh, is that exactly the challenge now? So we can do it. Yeah, we'll have to do it faster next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll have to pick uh, a spot further away. Yeah. Good. Here we've hour. got another <laughs> another guy who's coming in now. He's just been beaten about five minutes, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, don't be so scared. Damn it. I had you for about 200 meters up there. Well played for that. <laughs> Good effort, mate. Thanks very much, mate. No worries, <laughs> uh, What was your name? Martin Hassel. Martin Hassel. I only got the map at about <laughs> 10 to 4. I saw it on the internet last night. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, very quick. Did you uh, drive into the region before that? Like? Um, yeah, I was yeah. At, um, at five o'clock. I was just shy of Ruthin. I'm from Nantwich. Oh, okay. So I was coming across. Yeah, we come from Axon. We, we parked up in Ruthin. What's your it? name? I saw a post on, on the. Chris Thompson. Yeah, I think you're. I've been spamming. The yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, I said, I said, uh, well, I'm on uh, a good drive up to Ruthin. Wait there. But then we thought, no, no, let's go more central. So we went up Denby Way to Bolkai. Yeah. So we, we did a whole. Above, above the forest yeah. area, yeah. We've done past it a few times, but... I thought for me, the uh, best place was probably going to be roughing. Yeah. I could race straight over. But then we had visions of me going, yeah, it's uh, near past that. Because that was another <laughs> path I thought was... Um... So there we go. Uh, our second Dash Resilience event. Our first winner. Chris and the team. And then five minutes later, uh, another guy had come all the way from Namwich. And then about 15, 20 minutes after that, another group of three. Um, what that does mean is, I, uh, I get to go home now and have a glass of red wine and uh, I think the rest of the lads are uh, going to the pub uh, to congratulate themselves on their effort and commiserate themselves on being that little bit too late. Remember, doing this every month, so the next one will be the last weekend in September. Um, Strong, tough, resilient.